Okay, take your seats. I think I think to write a successful essay on the consumers we have to continue digest article C. So which corners of the article 6, which contain multiple aspects, sub-rules, various avenues, options and the like. So please realize that each R, article 6 of a regulation, is, is a world in itself. Maybe containing one rule, there are many R's without any rule, so thank you legislator, but there are many rules with Many addresses, many articles, paragraphs, sections, with multiple rules inside. So what is the wealth of Article 6? In the back, the lady next to the red one. So the negative definition of someone is being the neighbor of someone else. As the consumer, you're not in trade and profession. So what would you say is the first section about? Of so let's think of a new exam question. What is the first paragraph of Article 6 about? Of the regulation. Body language as well, you know, it, it's about what it is about, and it is exactly your profession. The only thing you have to do is tell me what it is about. So, I'm not asking what do you feel with paragraph one, I'm not asking to put it in the perspective of the Second World War, or in, so, so just tell me what it is about. So Okay, and now we have to be very Your voice, reach Okay, can you be a little bit more precise? Does it, is it sort of announcement, this article will regulate the applicable law, or does it give it Answer? Is it something you can already apply in a case or not? Okay. So the first paragraph is already a solution. We have two options of providing privileges, that you basically fill in a non-existing choice or that you limit the amount of choices. Which of the two options is it? Neighbor? Neighbor, what's the question? Previous question. Good one. I uh, does the actual does the article give an answer to a question or it asks a question? Almost. And my question was <laughs> out of the privileges a rule of law can provide a weak party in the absence of choice, you can say, well if you do not choose we we choose on your behalf. That's option one. Or option two, like with the travel uh, uh, contract, the privilege is that you limited amount of choices. And you do not fill in. 
Still no choice in the travel paragraph. So this is which flavor, neighbor? So can you explain why it would limit the amount of choices? No, no, we, we are not yet in paragraph four. We are just in paragraph one. So if you reconsider your answer, what is paragraph one about? So I'm not talking about what can you do with consumers, but I zoom in on paragraph one. What is paragraph one doing? In which conditions this article will apply? Yeah? So um, I think it explains um, the law applicable in a consumer contract is the law of the country in which the consumer has his habitual place of residence if two requirements are met. And the two requirements are if the professional um, basically pursues his professional or trading activity, commercial activity, in the country in which the consumer has his place of habitual residence, or if that professional, in a way, through agencies or sub branches or other mediums, directs or advertises or his uh, trade or profession in that country. Yeah. So, paragraph one tells you which law applies. So not limiting the options, but just giving the straightforward answer. And then, there's a layer in paragraph one being two more elements that need to be fulfilled. Iraq is applying not just the rule, but all the elements of the rule on a case. So you identify a consumer, reep, 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 as on the radar, and then you check two more conditions. And those are conditions that are 99% of all the cases fulfilled. Because if you buy as a consumer in your own country, in a shop, goods or services, then by definition that trader and professional is in your country because you're in his shop. Secondly, if you are at home and you buy online, then the trader and professionals reaching out to you through channels of communication and it appears on your screen in your home and therewith the provider is in your home and in the country in which you have habitual residence. So when is paragraph one not applicable? when you are on vacation. To make it simple in this thing. So the message to traders and professionals is when you reach out to consumers please be aware that you enter the economy of the country of that consumer and that by law, if there's no choice of law, then the law of that country in which you operate is providing the applicable law. Which is basically the statutist approach to the um, statuta mixta, the contract, in which the territorial principle applies. So it's sort of a no-brainer, as in, duh, if you come from Mars, you expect this rule. Because if we 
buy Sony products or Apple products here in the Netherlands, you do not expect California law or um, uh, Japanese law if no choice of law is made. All right, but there are more paragraphs in Article 6 because otherwise lawyering would be boring if this would be the answer. So, next row. What more does Article 6 brings us? Over there. Yes, you. With the white laptop, yeah? Okay, two, two, two seconds reading time. What is Article 6 more telling us? Okay. What, 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 what other requirements are in Article 6? So in total, there are three more paragraphs. And so it's, it's, a, it's, it's like a novel of Tolstoy. With, with many more situations and, and people can get a PhD on one of those paragraphs. And so in the upcoming, yeah, you laugh, but they are quite happy. After 10 years of research, they understood paragraph 3 completely. Isn't that great? No. Yeah. So if in the heat of an exam you have to say something sensible about the rest of Article 6, <laughs> how would you avoid to, to tell me as greater... Well, I, I did not got my PhD, so uh, go to your own library. And it's not sort of... So I gave you some time in telling about the history of, or not, the potential of Article 6. So what are, among others, issues that are addressed in the remaining part of Article 6? And I'm talking to the same student. Yeah. Neighbor, what, what, what type of factual law? Neighbor? Okay, which is? No, but in, in six, it's, it's, it's which part of six? Oh, six part of six. Okay. So, if you look at paragraph three, What, what are the conditions in which paragraph 3 comes to a line? And what is the consequence if paragraph 3 comes to a line? So when do we use paragraph 3? Neighbor. If the conditions of paragraph 1 do not apply. And so, as a rule of thumb, when you're on vacation. So this is not a scientific name, but let's call it the vacation paragraph. And what is then the legal consequence of being on vacation, in terms of applicable law? So it's like a board play in which you have to take steps and then sometimes you have to go back to start. Monopoly. Alright? When you're on 
the square of vacation and you have to go back to star? <coughs> article 3 and 4. Well, neighbor, what are article 3 and 4 telling us? Being? Um, so article 3, so what do you test then while on vacation? In terms of article 3? No, neighbor, what do you exactly test if you're confronted with article 3? Yeah, so they can decide. So what do you actually test? Test freedom of choice? No? So in a factual case, neighbor, what do you actually, so the other neighbor, what do you actually test? Yes? Whether a choice is made. So it's a factual question. So the rule is freedom of choice, and when you test the rule, you check, did they do it? All right. If there is a choice of law, and then it stops there. If there is not a choice of law, neighbor, then according to Article 6, Paragraph 3, you do what? And how do you then apply Article 4? So you're on Mallorca, and you buy a beer, and making beer is not your trade profession, drinking beer is your trade profession. <laughs> so in the bar there's no choice of law, it's not here's your beer and Spanish law applies. So which law applies on selling beer in a disco in Mallorca, according to Article 4? Spanish law, because? The seller is having habitual residence in Spain, because Mallorca belongs to Spain, don't ask me why. And how do you know that he is having habitual residence in Spain? Because you're in the disco, so the seller is around you and in your head, noise-wise. Yeah, so that's sort of habitual residence enough in year one. So, it's like planning a vacation. The Rome Regulation and the Brussels Regulation. So you have a destination and then you have two roads. And if there's a choice, you go to destination article 3. If there's no choice, you go to destination article 4. So it's a whole scheme with options. You can make a computer program to get the applicable law, but bets or euros are cheaper than a computer program. That's why we explain you how it works. Yes? And by choice you mean, is there a choice written in the contract whether we can decide or is there a choice made already between us? Well, that, that's the same. And so making a choice is something you have to do. So in the advanced class, there are a few options, but let's say the first way you know that the choice is made, that you read the clause on this contract, Spanish laws, uh, uh, applicable law, dot, signatures. But there are also ways how you can make sort of implicit choice, but that is not subject of this course. Yeah, but it's a factual thing. So it must be written because if it's not in it, 
I could I could suggest it. Okay, let's put it in the could you put it in your contract and then we don't need to go to a Sure. So the idea is that you could change your contract and add a choice of law. But by the time you need that, you are fighting. So there is no way that you will agree on it. Why? Because, let's move back last few minutes to lecture number one. Why do we worry about the applicable law? Because then in one legal system, you have a claim and you get one million. And in the neighboring legal system, it's da 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 da, no million. And that makes this topic of law a relevant topic of law. So the whole idea is that these applicable laws differ from country to country. And depending on your position, you have a preference. So if there's a choice of law, and it's the wrong law, then you see whether you can challenge the choice. That you say, I didn't put a signature under this contract. But weak parties cannot say, I didn't sign. Because you all remember that you clicked on accept general terms and conditions. And that click is saved in the vault of the trader and the professional. Because in that you made the choice. But you're right, in the dispute or in a negotiation around the contract, you could add a choice, 24 7. Yes? How do we determine the habitual residence? How do we determine the habitual residence? Which article gives an answer to that question? 19. Article 19, loud and clear. purposes of this regulation, the habitual residence of companies and other bodies, corporate or unincorporated, shall be the place of central administration. The habitual residence of a natural person acting in the course of his business activity shall be his principal place of business. So we have the sole proprietorship, <coughs> principal place of business. So if a disco on Mallorca is the sole proprietorship of a American hippie, and then the principal place of business is where you are, where the disco is physically, and where he is providing you with noise and things. And so there's a factual description of a reality on the globe. And the central administration is where they receive and send letters from. In terms of internet, when you look at the contact button, then there's an address, and where that address is, that is the central administration. And that means that if you are, for tax purposes, corporate law-wise, established in Delaware, United States, or Amsterdam, the Rolling Stones is established in, or is, 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 is having uh, a limited liability corporation in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. For tax reasons, because the Netherlands is a tax haven. Uh, but they do not live in the Netherlands. And so their central administration is in Hollywood or wherever they live. So this is a fact also the intention of Article 19 is that we can point at where they actually are. Factual, easygoing approach. Other tax havens are the Cayman Islands and the Bahamas, yes. or Switzerland. Yes. And, and that is then not the central administration if no phone number or address is to be found on the website because no one is actually working there. It's just a fiction. So the regulation works and the Brussels 1-2 with the reality. Where are you really economically active? As a sole proprietorship, as a incorporated